I have no idea how to do this anymore, but basically, hi, welcome to the vlog. I didn't film for a very long time. I have no idea why I moved. So this is my new apartment that I lived in for two months, but unpacking took a while. I have one flatmate and so I'm not fully alone, but it's better than dorm. And I have my own big ass kitchen that I got to the car and I have a dining table, which I didn't have before. And I put flowers on it. I have table to put flowers on. That's uh, exciting really exciting for me at least for now and i've decided to post regularly try to post regularly again because i really like it but it felt weird to just post a video randomly so i decided to do this first give you an update vlog what my life is like in denmark and tomorrow is valentine's day and i'm very very single very very single which is okay no it's fine i feel like it's much better to be single than with the wrong person and when i look at some of my friends relationships they are with the wrong people i feel like they just kind of settled you know like <laughs> so i try to think about them when i feel like you know sad about those stuff that it's better to be alone and pursue your dreams and your hobbies your friendships than, um, than being with someone where you're constantly mad and upset and unhappy. Um, but anyway, I figured it's a good time to vlog. And that was a long ramble. I'm going to Sephora right now. I ordered the Gizu hair perfume. And if you don't know the brand, it's by this influencer, Nagid Mirsalehi, and I love her so much, so much. I follow only a few influencers on Instagram because majority of them would make me feel so bad, so bad about myself, but she's gorgeous, but doesn't make me feel jealous or bad about my body. She's just very inspirational to me. And uh, in the past, I bought from her the Gizu hair oil, and I'm not a huge fan of it. I feel the smell is beautiful and the bottle design. I mean, this is the prettiest hair oil bottle I've ever seen in my life but I find it very hard for myself to spread it in my hair if that makes sense I always put it on my hands and like rub it like that but then whenever I, I try to do it like this just to make sure I don't you know leave greasy strings but I always do I feel like it's impossible to do it without it I use Olaplex oil which I think is better for me specifically specifically for me <laughs> but uh, I was in Sephora and I used the tester of the hair perfume and they have the one which smells exactly like the hair oil and this smell is very nice but then in Sephora they have this floral edition which I really wanted to try uh, so I figured uh, I'm gonna get it and actually now there's a discount at Sephora here in Denmark so I ordered it online I'm going to pick it up and then I'm going to see my friend Dominica another Dominica, two Polish Dominicas in Aarhus. I'm going to see her for some small lunch, I guess, and uh, take you with me. must be thinking that I'm totally crazy because you guys are on the bench and I'm squatting in front of it doing a slow squat like a Polish person I am anyway I really want to try it before I go see my friend and it looks really really cute I love the packaging of their stuff it always looks so so beautiful looks so cute uh, I'm sucker for cute things Jesus Christ let's see Oh yeah. <laughs> that smells nice. It does smell nice. We'll see how long it will last. Also, people in Sephora must think I'm crazy because I've been coming for like multiple days in a row, choosing between two perfumes. Both were from Narcisio Rodriguez for her this one and then for her this one. And I was coming every day, putting it on my other wrist, on paper and stuff, trying to figure out which one I want. And today I went in and I tried Yves Saint Laurent Libre. And I also like this one, so it didn't help. So, yeah, this is where I am right now. First world problems. <laughs>
You know, sometimes it's just best to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Are you grumpy? Are you a grumpy little oh. gremlin? Are you a little grumper wearing your grumpy pantaloons? <laughs> Are you a floofy McGrump Grump? Is your name Grumpy McGrump Person? Makes me laugh. Probably way more than you should have. <laughs> By the way, there's someone vacuuming over there. Not sure if you can hear or not, but uh, I use this thing over here, number um, number six, and then uh, just like, and then number seven, the bonding oil, and it is so nice for a little bit of hair styling because I don't use any heat tools or anything. But this way, when my hair dries, it dries in a nice way. <laughs> it does make sense. Also. It's enough to just make a bun on top of my head for after they dry, just for like half an hour. And then my hair is nice and flowy. And I'm too lazy to put my clothes on, so hope none of my boobs pops out. That's not this stuff. I mean, some of you maybe wanna watch my boob pop out, but you know, not a good idea. And I'm having a date, Tinder date, with Finance Corpo Boy. If um, anyone's been on TikTok, you know that this is a. Uh, you know, dangerous territory, but uh, he seems nice for now. For now, we'll see. Maybe he's a total asshole. Who would have known? I always feel like I look like a wet chicken whenever I have my head wear. You know, like in the commercials or whatever, they have this like sexy look, like models with wet hair. It doesn't work for me. This is not sexy at all. A few minutes later. I have some thoughts. Basically, I've been talking with some of my friends lately and I feel like everyone has been going for some kind of emotional existence rut, rot, rut. Something is going on, something is happening in the air for everyone. I don't know what it is about. I think it's just like a winter depression catching up with people, but it's like everyone I met with this week are like, oh, how have you been doing? And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm fine. And they're like, oh, I've been feeling so depressed lately. And I'm like, oh, actually, <laughs> actually I can relate to this if we're being honest. And I don't know, Valentine's Day has been like two days ago. So, uh, you know, you see a lot of posts, people being happy in love and stuff and you're, I don't know, I think you're just more conscious, on, self-conscious on those days that it's something that uh, you don't have. And um, yeah, and the weather's been shit and I don't know what it is about. Also, like, I feel like everyone's been a little bit TMI. I feel like all of my friends, like our periods synced up or something because we were all like, oh. My period has come and I'm being so moody and it's just like, oh. And all of that got me thinking basically not really how to get out of this like emotional rut and depression and stuff, but kind of what can I learn from this? So yesterday I had just this awakening at work. So random, I was just kind of sitting and thinking to myself, what are the things that make me happy? Like not superficial happy, not, you know, like putting makeup on and looking cute is nice or having nice food is nice, but long term, like kind of, it will sound very cheesy and very cliche, which is not my type of communication because I'm Polish and we don't do that. What kind of fits my soul? Like not all superficial stuff, but like deeply inside what makes me truly, truly happy. And I don't know, guys. Okay, I didn't film it. No, it was a really long time. And I didn't film it, but basically I went, it's been now almost five years, summer 2018, I went to Bali to volunteer. I was teaching English to children for a month and we were staying in a village, not at all in a touristy place. It was just a village uh, with our building in the middle, like the, the school. Um, and it was kind of funny because there were some tourist resorts nearby so we were kind of like sneaking in to lay by the pool <laughs> although we were not guests because people at the center were like oh we know people who work there like you can just come in and it's fine um, but then I don't know it was just very fun times and yeah we were not staying in a hotel we were staying in a village of people and we were walking on the streets everyone was so genuinely happy to see us we went to the mall like in a town the closest to the village. The town was called Gyanyar, Gyanyar. And we went there to arcades with a friend of mine. And it was so funny because people were taking pictures of us and filming us without saying anything. They had those massage chairs. 
and we were sitting there and this one lady just came over sat between us and her friend was taking pictures which was and like not saying anything because they were not speaking the language it was just so so funny um but it was very really very rural and you know i remember you know seeing i just think you know about those places you know that you go to the resort and you're very much um kind of sheltered, maybe it's a bad word, but I don't know what's the be better way to say it. You're kind of out of touch with reality of how people actually live over there. But living in a village, we saw the houses, I don't know if you could even call it a house, like the shacks that people live in and children like washes, washing themselves in like a rice field, rainwater. Um, also, you know, I was vegetarian back then uh, before I came to Bali, but being in Bali it made me even more vegetarian because um, going through the village you could hear animals being killed and stuff and you became very aware of where your food comes from also like in that center where we were staying um, we had like dinners uh, yeah we had dinners and the local people from the center were cooking for us they were basically doing like a stir fry type of stuff and one chicken breast goes for four people like a mix of vegetables and like yeah one fourth of a chicken breast per person which sounds so crazy because here i'm used to just eating like one chicken breast is a serving you know easily <laughs> um and then i eat meat multiple times a day not just like once so um, being there you realize that this is actually like an animal you're eating you not know, just you know product from the store because that's a thing there was no supermarkets really with the meat you were going to the guy who had like 20 pigs, you know, in the in a backyard and, you know, getting that for like a party, you know, like a whole ass pig. It was totally different. And, um, oh my gosh, why did I start talking about it? Basically, because I really like this way of traveling much more. I mean, sometimes, you know, here in Europe, it's nice to just go with your friends for like a week to Spain for a beach. But when it comes to like traveling further out, I don't want to go to freaking... Thailand or Bali and just sit in a tourist resort It's just not for me And uh, I figure that I want to do something similar this year Or with uh, animals, I don't know Some of you will be making fun of me, such a stereotypical, you know, young woman these days Taking care of animals, not more than about children, but Animals have always, I don't know how to explain it I've never felt such a genuine love from anyone as I did from our family dogs and maybe you think that I'm totally insane I wouldn't blame you but just the reality of things I was the only child and my parents were busy and uh, basically um, the dog was like my only true friend growing up uh, I was also very I don't know how to explain it. I was very social and I enjoyed interactions with um, interactions with other people, but it was always really hard for me to basically find myself with my peers. I was always more into talking with adults. So I didn't really, I mean, I was very shy around children and didn't know like the whole politics, <laughs> politics in kindergarten, elementary school. I was never one of the cool kids, I was always like the shy one and uh, I was bullied a little bit and stuff and then coming back home it was just me and the dog and um, I don't know, I think because of that I just genuinely love animals so much up to this day like that's where I am the happiest version of myself when I'm with animals and uh, that's why I was like looking up volunteering options and I would love to go to Sri Lanka or Thailand to elephant sanctuaries, I think it would be so amazing or I was looking up, they have orangutan in Borneo uh, in Indonesia and I don't know, I feel like that's how I would like my summer to look like and I know like this whole topic of European kids going and volunteering you know in Africa or Asia can be a little bit controversial because um, you're not really doing any long lasting change over there and I'm very aware of it but you know when you stay in those centers um, part of what you pay for for going there part of it is to keep that center running so for example those sanctuaries that uh, save elephants or man I think especially like elephants they save them for very brutal conditions and uh, preserving orangutans and stuff basically you're funding the organizations with the money you pay for being there so I still think it's uh, you know when you have a choice between spending your summer partying in Malaga which is kind of what I did last summer 
uh, or uh, being with elephants in Thailand or Sri Lanka, I still feel like it's a better option. A few moments later. Today is the best day of the year. It's Fat First Day, which happens one of the first days in February. Okay, I don't know what the other rules, but basically it's Fat First Day in Poland, which means we we're eating shitloads of donuts and growing up it was so crazy because <laughs> we had donuts given to us in school by everyone there were constants during the big break who can eat the most donuts whenever you enter the stores there are donuts everywhere there are donuts and like my grandma she eats them only one time per year one donut because i'm in denmark they don't have the polish donuts which they call here berliner donuts but whatever basically a donut Donald donut with the icing and then jelly inside and it's such a good stuff but I will get Festelaun Bola which is kind of a donut as well that's the best I can do here in Denmark unless I go to Polish store but I'm way too lazy for that so I'm gonna go out right now in this uh, you see it's sunny it's Denmark in February and we have actually sun the past few days and I'm gonna get myself the Festelaun Bola probably from uh, Oh, actually, I was thinking La Calle Husent, but I can go to La Cabra. I think it's gonna be nice over there. They didn't have any anymore in La Cabra and I thought I'm going to La Callejuset but I ended up in Amaris so let's see how it goes I decided to come to the park because it's such nice weather and there's so many babies over here and fun fact this bridge over there oh my gosh camera uh, uh, over over there <laughs> little girl just saw me and she ran away because <laughs> I'm filming but yeah, this is a bitch over there. When I first got here, like a few months in, I had this thing with this one guy and I remember kissing him on this bridge. And now here we are, like what, six years later? It's crazy. You know, it's crazy because I didn't think I would stay in Aarhus for so long. I don't know. I kind of also feel like it's just like time to move on. Like I came here to study, I did my bachelor, master's, got my first full-time job, but I feel like I outgrew this place and it's time for new things and that's kind of what I'm figuring out right now What's the next step? What am I doing? I can do anything with my life, it's kind of exciting, you know? At first it was really scary but now I figured why just apply for jobs in Denmark? I can also look for stuff all over Europe or wherever It's um... Yeah... <laughs> wow Anyway, I'm gonna dig into this little baby and uh, my battery is blinking. But let's see, let's do one taste test. Maybe my camera is gonna die. Mm, this is okay, not the best, but eatable. <laughs> 